Hello, I am about to joke. <clears throat> is that right? This is another episode of Actorholics. Today we're going to be talking about how to find the right acting teacher or coach for you. So the best way to find your acting teacher that you really jive with is to just audit as many classes as you can. So one of the kind of blessings that came out of the pandemic was that a lot of things moved online. So I had the privilege to do a Shakespeare training course with RADA, which is the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in London, that I would have never had access to before the pandemic. So thanks, COVID. Just kidding. Thank you, but no. Um, so uh, even if you don't live in a big city, you can still access different acting courses and start getting a flavor for what type of acting language works for you, whether you're into method acting or... Um, kind of more body-based movement style acting like a Chekhov technique class or Alexander technique and start just exploring, experimenting and just do audits when you first start out. And then if there is one that you kind of feel more inspired by, then I would give each studio three months trial. I would hop around a lot and do a month at places but in retrospect I don't think it was enough time to really get it because sometimes I would just have resistance to the technique or to what the teacher was saying and instead of being patient and curious I would get impatient and defensive so that's another way to kind of find out if that if you're feeling particularly defensive the class might be bringing something up in you that you could address and it could help free up your instrument in a way that you might not expect so I would first trial it out with different auditing, then give places about three months of your time to check it out. And then lastly, I would just read as many books on acting as you can, because then once you start getting a feel for the language and getting an understanding of what language speaks to you the most, like for example, I fully love Harold Guskin's How to Stop Acting book. It just fits my own philosophy with acting and my own kind of philosophy and in how to approach things as an artist and so that really speaks to me so I found a teacher who studied with him um, Robert Colt so you know that would be that would be kind of the trajectory and then once you find a place that you really like and you like the language of the acting method itself stick with it for like a year like give it a full year of your time and if you um if you're with a teacher that you don't particularly like but you like the type of training then just switch classes so how do you find the type of teacher that works for you so a good acting teacher will not give you too many compliments not give you too much critique it's kind of like goldilocks you have to find someone who's just right because I've been in classes where it was only compliments and everybody's giving themselves a big pat on the back and everybody's taking a big long smoke break in between every single scene and it's just too luxuriating and too, um, at least for me, everything works different for other people. Um, but for me, I feel like it has to be like just right in the middle. Like everybody's having a good time, but we're also here to work. Um, that there's critique, but it's not psychological critique. So that's something that happens way too often in LA, especially, I don't know about elsewhere, but even with between friends, let alone like in an acting class with that sort of power dynamic of like, I am the teacher and you are the pupil. People get into these psychological analysis based conversation where it's like, I feel like you're only reacting like that because you have a problem with your mom or whatever and it's just like bitch we ain't in therapy okay like this is an acting class you're not qualified so i once had a teacher who um who i was working with that i i gave it was my second month in and i was kind of i thought am i just feeling resistance or not and um and I am doing a mother-daughter scene and this place does only substitution. So substitution is where you take a real person in your life and you place it on your scene partner to get a real response, a real emotional response from because you're dealing with something here. And I didn't really like the technique that much because I feel like the, the scene goes out the window and you're just dealing with your own 
problems outside of class, outside of the scene. And so, um, you know, maybe he could feel that I wasn't really doing the exercise because I didn't really like it. So he, um, he stopped the scene really abruptly and he said, what doesn't your mother love about you? What does your mother not love you for? And it was just so shocking and so, um, so bullying that I, I told the teacher to fuck off and I left. I said, I don't know what your relationship with your mother is like, but I have a good relationship with mine. And I do not appreciate the fact that you're trying to dig something from my own life when these are imaginary circumstances. So was I defensive? Maybe there was other things. Maybe there was a, a hard truth that I wasn't ready to face yet or whatever. However, it is not the job of an acting teacher to try to heal your family trauma. So if you get into a class where people are just kind of trauma bonding, I would get out like as quickly as possible. It's called a